Ah yes, the L96 sniper rifle and 16x scope combination. An extremely rare entity in the world of Rust, which begs the question, how do we keep this extremely rare item as well as other rare items safe in your base? Well, the thing is you can't keep it safe within your base. So where do you put it? Well, you put it under your base. Uncle Helen? Can you show me how to hide my loot? Calm your tits, Billy! And fetch Uncle Helen a beer. Um, I can't find your beers. Uh, you look for the fish, and I'll get it myself. Can't even fetch a beer. Unfreaking believable. Billy? Bill! Have you ever heard the quote, what the eyes see and the ears hear, the mind believes? Illusionist and escape artist Harry Houdini made this famous quote and it describes a misdirection. The action or process of directing someone to the wrong place or in the wrong direction. Okay, stop the music. Cut the visuals. I'm gonna throw a grenade. Using just your ears, I want you to tell me where this grenade is gonna land. Left or right? If you had said right, you may have been correct. And judging by the look of that residue from the explosion, you very well may be. However, do you know that your grenade went off? I mean, you heard the direction of the explosion, you saw the residue from the explosion. But did you actually see the grenade go off? Now using the concept of misdirection, we're going to hide a basement in this lowered out piece of terrain. Having the ground be this low is essential to selling the illusion. We start off with a sleeping bag. We place a foundation above the sleeping bag. This is essential for the build to work. This sleeping bag and foundation will become your 2x1 basement later. We now add raised foundations right around it. Be sure to make your design different to mine because your future radar might notice it. I'm making a multi-triangle airlock at the entrance. I try placing a half wall in my basement to make sure that it all fits, but it looks like my bag is a little bit too close. No worries, I'll move the bag and try again. Ah, perfect. Place a half wall for testing and put two floor tiles down as the roof. At this stage there will be bitches in the comment section saying We can just check the stability of the floors and we'll know it's fake flack. Duh! No, you won't be checking it and I'll explain why you won't in a bit. But for now, remove the fake floor, add doorways to work out how you're going to structure your base, a door to your basement area, and a door to your 3x1 loot area. I'll finish up the rest of the walls. By my basement I'll stack half walls. I then remove the lower half walls and then I add low walls so that you can see and access the future items in this room. Alrighty, let's get stoned. And finally making the single basement foundation stone too. The half wall never gets upgraded, however the fake floor gets upgraded every time you lock off for the night. I'll explain the entire process of the build once I'm done. If you're super careful, you can place your storage boxes like this, one on the side over here, the barbecue with 12 slots of storage. Be sure to pull out your building plan and place a half wall just to make sure that it fits, sometimes it doesn't. A small box under the barbecue is a little bit tight and two to the side of it. Behind your sleeping bag, you can place a further four small boxes. Or if you're patient enough, which I'm not, you can place layer upon layer of hidden stashes. I personally hate the stash idea because they're incredibly difficult to access, so I opt for the small four boxes instead. Lovely. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, 90 slots in the big boxes. We've got 7 boxes of 12 slots each. That's 84 small slots plus 12 for the barbecue. 12, 84, 90. That's 186 slots. My good lord, that is sexy. Now, how do we make it work? How do we prevent folks from coming inside here? I mean, we've got to sell this, right? Using misdirection. So, let's seal it up and I'll explain. Place a half wall down. You make sure the weak side of the half wall is facing the sleeping bag because you're going to be spawning in there and you're going to need to break it. You don't want to break the hard side of a twig with a rock. It takes forever. 
place down the floor tiles, make them stone and you'll see the giveaway that tells you that this isn't a real foundation. It has 18% stability. Real foundations of course have 100% stability. So we're going to use a number of separate elements to keep them from entering this room and firstly we start with the low walls. They're low enough so that you can fully see inside but high enough so that you can't view the stability of the floor. The next element of misdirection comes in the form of placing items to establish a realistic use for this room. A large box, barbecue, furnace, another one. These items would give the reader even more confidence. He can see every item in the room from every single angle. He can also access all the deployables too. He's also got soft walls facing him, so he can easily pick through this wall if he wanted to, and he knows this. Simply put, the more elements of misdirection you add, the less likely they'll want to be inside this room. Oh, and guess what? I'm a role player too now. Why the hell would Timmy McRando the role player be hiding a weapons cache under the floor to his kitchen, right? But understand how important selling your lie is going to be. Furnish these items with random and scattered loot to make sure that they look like they're in use. A hint of suspicion will instantly kill any veil of misdirection. Now, how does this work? Well, let's say the entirety of your loot is sitting inside this one box and you've just had a day of butt sex in the world of rust. You pick up your fake items, you store them somewhere, you make like Jeffrey Epstein and you spawn back in your basement. Lovely. Take down your low wall to your basement. You go grab your most precious loot, not all of it, just most of the items. It is critically important to leave a few items behind. A raider with zero loot after using a bunch of gunpowder will act like a crack addict in rehab and probably pick your base to the ground. Go store your shit in the basement. Place a half wall, remember soft side facing the bag. Add some floors, upgrade with a fairly cheap 300 stone. Remembering to place down your distraction deployables again. Fill them up with random and realistic bits of loot and repair them so that they are good as new. Now I've used this as my secondary base to my main base in the last two wipes. Both were on very populated servers. The one wipe I was raided once, they didn't find the stash. The other wipe they raided me twice, they didn't find the stash both times. However, the second time when they raided me, they actually destroyed my TC and took over the base. Luckily, I waited for them to log off, I crafted a fuck ton of wooden picks, and I spent the next hour or so picking my way out of the base, much like an alien movie. I do hope you enjoyed this build, let's place one final element of misdirection just to seal the deal. You can't go wrong with a beautiful painting. Ah, oh, look at that. That looks fantastic. What? Wait, wait, is that my base? No, it can't be my base. I don't hear anything. <sighs> Here we go again. A critically important thing to remember is that people do watch my videos, so if you're going to be building this, please be sure to change the design. You know, maybe switch out the half walls for like a, a window frame with bars on it, so maybe take out the furnaces and put in research tables or repair benches, whatever. Try, try and change it up. I mean, at the end of the day, people comment on my videos and they're like, hey, I built your base, I got raided, it's bullshit. Well, unfortunately, people build exactly the same way I do, and the people that raided them are also people watching my videos. So if you're going to be using the design, try and use the idea, mix things up, change it up, keep them guessing. A special thank you goes out to my beautiful patrons. I have no idea why these guys are still supporting me. They're like, they give me money every month. But if you do want to join the Patreon squad and get early access to my videos, please be sure to click on the Patreon link in the video description. Alternatively, if you'd like to be like my ex, you can stalk me on Twitter, follow what I can only describe to be the world's most sexiest Twitch account, or of course join the Alpha Death Squad Supernova Discord. Be sure to click on all of my social links in the video description below. Shout out to Goddess Herrick and JV Gaming for purchasing some awesome sexy flak merchandise. I freaking love you guys. And finally, we get to the $500 PayPal giveaway. This is video number three of the competition. It is quite a simple competition. I hide a four digit code in numbers somewhere in the video. It occupies about five to seven frames worth of footage. Every single video in the competition will have a four digit code. Add those four digits up and you'll have a four, eight, 12, 16, 20 character code at gmail.com. The first person that emails me the code I win will win $500 PayPal. None of that subscribe to my channel bullshit, like this post, share this link, fuck that. The first person to come up with the code wins the money. It is that simple. I'm gonna add a description in the video link below just so that you can get some more understanding. I don't wanna repeat myself too many times in this video. If you did enjoy this video, please be sure to leave 
a thumbs up. That little intro I did, that tiny little shooting animation thing, it, it literally took me like six days to pull off. It was a bit of a nightmare, mainly being because the bullet that I fired out the gun wasn't actually there. It, it has things like shadows and reflections and like color density when it reflects off the roof and the sky. The bullets had to change colors, it had to rotate, it had to zoom in and out. It was, it was a nightmare.